All right, we in there? Yeah. Okay. Chat's up. Chat's working. I got two out of three. I guess that's not bad. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. We don't need. And Facebook. I'm going to give Facebook a shot. So we're going to have this open right here. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Wait, is that the chat? No. Okay. Um, let me launch one more window here. Hey, Sirius, thanks for showing up. All right, let me see. Let me see if I had any streaming topics we wanted to go over. Ew, or if I remember to write them down. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, da, 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 da. Not really. Nothing. I don't see anything that we got from last time. So let's go into the load tools here. Uh, uh, uh. What do we want to do today? What do we want to do this morning? Streaming. We usually do this. Hey, Fernando, thanks for showing up. Let me see if I can load all of these at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Bowser Kids here. We're going to go to this uh, Bowser Jr. Refine here. And I think that's the latest one. Was this guy close to getting done? We put these guys to bed. Hold on, let me launch some reference here. Let me use Quadro more run as administrator. Yes. Thank you. Open recent Bowser Jr. reference. What I'm doing is loading up a bunch of reference in here so I can see. And um, so now what I'm going to do, we'll start doing a little bit of poly painting here. So I'm first going to turn off the line cursor to the surface, and then I'm going to crank my lazy radius up with my standard brush, then I hit L to turn it off, then I'm going to crank my Z intensity up a little bit, and we'll start um, defining these faces. Now right now you're going to see when I sculpt on this, it's kind of doing a little artifact around there. It's just uh, like a little graphics glitch. But uh, move this down real quick. Um, so it's a little graphics glitch here because if I go over here to geometry, you're going to see we have dynamic subdivisions turned on. So if I do shift D, you see that's the geometry I'm actually uh, deforming. And then if I do D, that's just going to be a preview of my dynamic surface. So let's do shift D and then I'm going to hit control Z to knock that back down. So we'll subdivide first before I start digging his nostrils in there. We could go through here and like model his nostrils out if we wanted to, I suppose. Um, let's see if we go here ish and then we're just using Z modeler brush. So BZM and we're going to say Q mesh polygroup all. We'll just kind of push these back here. And it looks like on the, on the front, these things, we could go back in here and collapse these edges back. Maybe let's see how this, deforms for us. We'll go ahead and hit D for our dynamic preview and then we can get that kind of look. And now we can just go through here and we can kind of stretch and push and pull these things to get the look we want. I suppose that's about right. Um, we're probably going to have poly painting doing the heavy lifting for us in this case. I don't see myself going, giving them real deep nostrils. Go ahead and move these around here. Alrighty. Um, yes, thanks for showing up, Hannibal. I'm back. Uh, Siri says, I have a question. If I import a mesh from photogrammetry, I'd like to pose that mesh into another pose. How would you go about maintaining the correct measurements without the mesh deforming too much? Um, so this is kind of, if I understand correctly, um, you're talking about maintaining volume when you're, you know, posing something. And that's a, that's a good way to, <laughs> I mean, if it's a simple thing, like a ball, you could you could write an equation that would maintain volume. But if it's just like a human being, um, it's more just uh, a function of sculpting. Uh, let's see, is this still Dynamesh? Okay, we need to zero mesh this guy. It's more of a function of, uh, for example, let's go ahead. Well, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to pose this guy out. So in order to pose this guy out, let's go ahead... And I'll get to your question in just a second. Um, but I think I'll be able to explain it better just by kind of doing it. So let's go through here. And I'm going to take my Damien standard brush. 
and I think we're pretty close to getting this guy done. So at this point, right now he's Dynamesh, so if I ever want to go in here and do like a snake hook and go like and do something crazy and then I can control drag and then snake hook again and control drag and snake hook again and control drag, um, I'm able to do that. But if I'm not doing any more major changes, what I tend to do is go ahead and zero mesh uh, this guy. Oh, you know what we need to do first though? Let's go ahead and give him a little pad on his foot here. And I do want to separate it out because I want it to be a separate material. So I'm just going to go into my my um, what, what would those be called? Primitives. <laughs> and then I'm going to kind of squash this uh, you know, my brain is not working well today. This is a sphere. I'm going to move this out. Now when I, I'm going to turn on L sim and I'm going to hold down Alt and go to the middle with that little teardrop icon. And we're just going to kind of stick a little sphere pad right here. And I'm going to squash the sphere pad down with a non-uniform scale. And we'll go ahead and push this in here like so. There we go. Now, if I want to dynamically preview this one, what I can do is I can hit D and that'll turn on my dynamic preview. And that looks fine. If you didn't like these polarized caps on here, you could just, um, let's go ahead and do split mass points under your split menu. And now let's do just a zero measure, same poly count, uh, adaptive size down to zero maybe. There we go. That'll give you a nice new geometry. Fits a little bit better for this shape. And then we'll go ahead and hit D again and kind of just, and this isn't real obviously precise NASA style box modeling, you're just kind of getting getting that shape going-ish. Um, he does look like he's not gonna be able to stand very flat, I used to have perspective off, and I do want to kind of make, you know, we're gonna be posing this guy out, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much, but I don't want these things bubbling out too much if I can help it. So I'm going to push those down and then compensate with uh, this guy. Let's see. So one thing to take note is, you know, as I was moving this thing around, it's kind of laggy and it's not that heavy. It's only 94,000, which Zebras can handle like a champ. I've gone here with my clay brush. It's like, oh, what's going on with my computer? It's because I have dynamic turned on. So sometimes it's hard to tell with your uh, Dynamesh meshes, but if I do Shift D or I turn that dynamic button off, now it's much more responsive. So if you accidentally hit the D key, you will turn dynamic on, which for some reason I keep doing today. There we go. Okay, so we've got this little pad feet, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and Z remesh this body. So uh, because we're not making any more major changes, um, he does have some semblance of a neck, although in most of the reference here, if I hit W and then turn on this move multi, hold that control, so let's go back into draw mode, control uh, shift, I can let's go, it's a select lasso. I can select all these pieces that I want to move. Um, <clears throat> let's see, control shift, there we go. I can go through and select these pieces that I want to move, and then I can move all of these at once. So it looks like in most of these, oops, let's get rid of his head there. Is this part of it? Oh, you know what? So all of these spikes are on the same subtool. So what I can do is I can alt tap these ones and I can temporarily just mask them. Alt tap these ones, temporarily mask them. And now I can go back through here. So it looks mostly like his head is just rotating on like a little pivot like so. And then his neck follows. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give his neck a little bit more breathing room if in case we need to hit a more... I mean, I'm really going to have to compensate with this guy's, like, no no neck situation here. Kind of problematic for animation. So let's undo all that. Hit W, Control shift dragged to unmark everything. And then I want to make sure I unmask all these things. Um, also, to make this a little bit easier, if I do want to pose these things, what I'm going to do is hold down Control shift and we're going to isolate this top knob. And also, Alt-Tap. There we go. And we'll go ahead and remove this one. That'll just make it a little bit easier when we're doing our our moving here. Uh, so we got our nostrils going. Let's just widen those out. Bear with me. I want to squish these in a little bit. 
He has very distinctive nostrils in some of these. So I'm going to pull these back here. It's got kind of like a, a swoop over here to a corner maybe. And then this gets very shallow on this side apparently. And this is all stuff you can sculpt to. I don't know why I'm feeling the need to box model these shapes. That's kind of silly. But anyway, that's closer. And then his teeth look like they're protruding a little bit far now. I don't know what happened there. I think I accidentally grabbed them. So let's move those back into place. Uh, we've got his tongue in here. We just squashed this um, cylinder down. So we're going to go ahead and do another Ziri mesh. Same on this one. There we go. All right, I think we're in good shape. Hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. This is a, uh, this is Bowser Jr., I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm not a Bowser expert. And, okay, so we got the pads on the feet, and we got the alt-tap. Come on. There we go. And we got his belly here. Now, is his belly embedded? Not really. That kind of sticks out, but we can make it look like, and again, I'm, this is a long diatribe before I get to zero meshing the body. I just want to make sure everything's where I want it before I make that commitment to zero mesher. I can always zero mesh later. It's not a huge deal, but I'm going to go ahead and build out a little bit. Let's turn on L for lazy radius. I'm just going to kind of build up just a little ridge around this, make it look like it's settled in there just a tiny bit. And another thing I want to do is I'm going to go into solo mode here, and I'm also going to knock all this back in here. You can mask this out too if you want, like so. There we go. Mask, control tap to invert that mask, control alt to sharpen that mask up. And now we can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. So we can go through your deformation menu, then you can say polish by features. And since there is no real features on here, it's just going to polish it. Let's turn on open circle so it really loses that volume there. And that'll knock that back. As well as, let's go, let's push this back in here. We can maybe scale this in. So again, we're still in Dynamesh mode, so we can just re Dynamesh as we need to. I also wanted to give him a little bit more of a neck. So we'll go ahead and mask and invert that. And then we'll go ahead and tilt this back a little bit and kind of pull this up. So I have a feeling in some of those ex more extreme animation poses, we're going to need just a tiny bit more of a neck. Gut feeling. OK, so I think we've got everything we need out of this shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the body here. We're going to duplicate it off. And <clears throat> so on this duplicate, uh, we're not in solo mode, so it's just sitting right on top of the other, but we want both of these because I want to get these details. Not a whole lot of details, obviously, but there's a little bit of detail I want to get back. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll go into solo mode. And what I'm going to do is go into our, so if you go down here to geometry, zero measure, I'm just using my custom menu for this. Um, we're going to go to target polygon count. Uh, five should be fine. Adaptive size, I'm not going to turn it down all the way, but I am going to drop it uh, quite a bit. Well, you know what? We're going to be moving this guy around. Let's keep that up here. So the lower we make this, the more even the quads are going to be, but it's going to kind of disregard surface changes. And it's not going to build in edges where it thinks it needs more detail, but I kind of want to. You know what we should do also? In order to get the edge flow that we want, instead of using BZ... Uh, Zero Mesher guides BZR and going in here and kind of telling Zero Mesher how we want to remesh it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use polygroups. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, there's a couple of different ways. You can go through here and you can mask these areas you want. You can hit Control W. And that'll group mask clear mask. It's under your masking menu. Um, I think, and then when we go to Zero Mesh Keep Groups, there's a Smooth Groups option that'll go ahead and smooth your, smooth your polygroup borders. I was going to say we could also go in here to Edge Loop, Edge Loop Mask Border, and that'll give you a clean cut as well. We, maybe we can use both. Um, another thing we can do, and also I want to clean this mask up a little bit. So 
hold down control. You can also use visibility. So if you wanted to just like use visibility here and then like invert that visibility and then just grab. Sometimes that's a little easier to see um, what geometry you need. So we can go ahead and maybe add a little bit here. Okay, and then we can hold down control and tap that one, bring it back, and then just do an edge loop mass border here. Um, that one, and we'll go ahead and do one for his neck here. Although I will say, this one was a little tighter. I'm gonna hold down control and blur that out, and then when I do an edge loop mass border, it should give me a little bit more of a smoother result. Fun fact. So, we'll go ahead and mask this one out here. And then edge loop mass border. Where am I at? There it is. And then for his leg here. And you can get it as detailed as you want. You know what? Let's just do visibility on this one again. So again, we're just showing and hiding, holding down control shift, going in with our lasso. And showing and hiding the geometry we want to be in a polygroup. And we're going to use these polygroup borders to dictate um, where my edge loops are going to end up for animation. Which for this guy may be important because he's so simple. Um, so hold down control and tap, bring everything back, control tap to blur that out a little bit, and then we'll do another edge loop mass border. That blurring and edge loop mass border may not be all that necessary, but you know what also we can do? We have this mask here. I'm gonna hold down control and go back into mask pin. I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of this. Let's turn off line so you can see a little bit better. Sorry, this is boring. Alrighty, I do mask border. Um, we got the arms. Let's go ahead and make sure we have one for the elbow here. It's gonna get really boring when you get to the hands. Yeah, that'll work. And then the knee, this one, I think we can just use a mask. There we go. And then the foot. Now, if you've been on this channel, um, on my workshop, workshop video specifically, um, we've gone over numerous ways to retopologize this stuff by hand and using zero measure and using zero measure in conjunction with topology brush or the zero measure um, Z spheres. But uh, I think this route we're just going to use zero measure straight up. Although we may do a little bit of cleanup work as we see fit. So we'll see. Let me go ahead and grab this tail here. And like I said, sometimes it is easier to do that visibility for things like this where it's kind of a pain to get in there and mask. You can go in there with visibility instead. There we go. And we'll grab a little bit more. Alrighty. Uh, you can also do Control shift x to expand and then Control shift s to shrink if you ever need to. Um, it's not going to give you great edge rings through here because it is just a dynamesh, but that's an option for you if you just need to grow a little bit. Thank you, alarm. I have some landscaping being done today, so I need to make sure the gate's unlocked. Let's see, edge of the mouse border. Alrighty. And now for the really boring part, we'll make this as fast as possible. So I'm gonna go in here, hold down control, mask lasso. Okay. And then for these fingers, I'm just going to do one. So like I said, you could you could go through there and do all these knuckles, but I think just one will be fine. In fact, let's go in here with our mask pin. I think they'll be easier. And all of these we can do at the same time. Mask, mask, unmask. 
And then we'll go back in here with our mask pin. There we go. One, one, one. Oh, yes, you. A little bit more. All right. And do mask border. And I think we are done. So now that we have the basic body, uh, we can zero mesh this. And again, it's going to use these. Um, so if you have select lasso, it'll go ahead and select edge rings, which is a feature. Let's go ahead and go to select rectangle. So we can see where these borders are. And you know what? If we wanted to be real fancy, let's be a little bit fancy. Um, you can go in here. Let's do a mask circle. And I'm just going to mask this little area right here. And we're going to go back to mask pin. Unmask is butt. There we go. And then control alt to tighten that mask up. And then we'll just clean this mask up a little bit. We will put an edge ring around here because why not? And again, you spend as little or as much time doing this as you want. Some days I get really particular about my edge flow, and then some days I'm like, man, I don't care. Just dynamic call it a day. So we have this information here. I'm not digging that neck. So if we want to ever clean these up, we can go through here and we can say, you know what? Turns out I don't want that much. So I can just go ahead and um, make that visible, mask it, and then we'll just do another edge of the mask border. And now these two masks, these red and the blue one right here, I'm just going to control shift tap one of those, invert that, tap these ones, control W, make that all one group. And now we can help zero mesh her out by just kind of moving these around. Okay, so for zero mesher, let's also, same thing on this one here. border okay so now that we got all that let's go through here and we're gonna do a zero mesh keep groups smooth groups up to one is fine and again we still have we got a duplicate over here that's just our, our source dynamesh here so we've got this one here so geometry Zero measure, target polygon count of five is fine. Adaptive size, let's crank that up to maybe 25, should be fine-ish. And we'll have zero mesh. We do have X turned on, which means we're getting symmetry across the X axis. It looks like we do have some border polygroups I need to take care of though. Give me a second here. So you're gonna notice right here, need to make that all one polygroup. And Let's also go in here to our poly groups and we'll do <coughs> merge stray groups and merge similar groups. And now let's zero mesh this thing. Zero mesher. Give it a second. Alrighty. We turn our line on, you see this is the geometry we're getting. Um, <clears throat> there's a few uh, weird things going on, but that's okay, because I am going to go a bit lower on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help zero measure out. So in these areas where I had apparently uh, extra polygroups, I'm going to go through here. First, let's do a quick uh, mirror and weld geometry, modified topology mirror and weld. I'm just going to go through here, and we're going to merge these groups and then these groups and then even through here all I got to do for zero mesher is to smooth this line out and it'll go through and make sure that these are acceptable when it zero meshes again anywhere else we're kind of weird or anywhere else we kind of want to just nudge these out a little bit and let's go ahead and round this out Again, that wasn't a super polished, or I should say, refined, smooth Dynamesh mesh by any means. So we'll go through here and just kind of help out zero mesher just a little bit. It's not magic. Sometimes it needs a little love. Now we know what else? Let's go ahead and grab this top piece too. So whenever you have a cap, 
or you want to like run a line around the bottom or the palm of a hand or something like that. On this one, it did a great job, but I do want to keep maintain this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, isolate this piece here. And um, let's go ahead and, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to grab this entire poly group up here. Let's go ahead and grab select rectangle. And then we're going to do uh, select lasso and we're going to get rid of this one. And then we can get rid of all these. Hit control W and now we've got an extra poly group up here. Now before we Z remesh this again because I am going to continue to lower this down and it looks like there's a little bit of an issue here. Let's go ahead and make this one poly group. And again, I'm just going to nudge these things into place. And if you ever want to paint polygroups, what you can do is you can go to zoom all the brush, hold down Alt, start painting, and then tap Shift. And now I go ahead and paint those polygroups, hit Control W. And this one. Go ahead and start alt painting, shift, and then we could even, if we wanted to, we could say bridge, I'm sorry, um, yeah, bridge two points here to here, and then again start alt painting, tap shift, and then paint these polygroups. You could even go so far as to say collapse an edge, just to make sure that these things are smooth. There we go. Maybe the same thing here too. This one over here should be smooth. So now that we got that all figured out, let's bring, uh, we still have solo mode turned on. So all I need to do, even if I, as long as these eyeballs are on, it is going to go ahead. And if you do a project all, it's under your sub tool project here. You just do project all, and that'll go ahead and project to the original um, surface. And I want to do that just because as we're lowering the polygon count, it is going to be averaging these vertices a little bit. So it's going to be kind of melting your object. And you know what, just for fun, we'll do another mirror and well, just to make sure it's perfectly mirrored. Now, let's do a zero mesh half, adaptive size of 27, keep group still on. Uh, maybe not half, let's do, what's our polygon count? 9,000, let's say, we'll keep it at four still. Okay, that worked fine. Um, most of those issues are worked out around our poly groups here. So again, let's just go ahead and do a project all get that shape back and I think we're in good shape. We can do a little bit of cleanup if you need to around these areas. Um, you also might need to maybe rebuild some of the stuff. So we'll just manually rebuild this with Z-spheres. Because I think in here we're gonna have to clean that up just a little bit on the finger. Maybe here as well. Let's go ahead and use the... Yeah. We'll clean those up around the uh, fingers manually. And also we can cap this off. So if you wanted to like simplify this, you could just do a quick delete hidden. And then you can go through here and you can say close convex hole. You can close that up and then you can isolate that. There we go. Something like that. Whew, sorry, I'm behind on these. If I miss anything, I apologize in advance. Oh, uh, let me scroll all the way back up the top. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Hey, Nepal, wow. Um, and again, we're, what we're doing now is we're just z-remeshing this body, and then we want to go through and pose it. Uh, the question is, how do you maintain volumes? And unfortunately, um, if we were rigging this thing and weighting this thing and doing muscle sims and having bones and painted weights and corrected blend shapes for a production, you could maintain those volumes that way. In this case, there isn't any semblance of that. So when you go and you bend something or you take a finger and you go 
bend it, you're going to have to go in and sculpt those corrections, which to be fair, it's the exact same thing you would do as, as a corrective blend shape, as you would go, you know, you would put bones in it, and then you would weight it. Is that showing up? Yeah. Move my head out of the way. Um, you would put, you would put bones in your uh, mesh here, and then you would go through and you would bend the bones, and you would paint weights to make sure that you maintain volumes as well as possible, but you're going to put enough geometry in here to ensure that you can go through and you can sculpt like corrective blend shapes, or you would put helper joints in there in order to maintain those volumes, but in ZBrush, it's just sculpting the corrective shapes. So you would just have to bend it and then go back in and sculpt those corrective shapes. So it's not really a, um, there's no real tricks, I don't think. I mean, I can tell you, I can show you how to like mask stuff. Um, you can also use these spheres to kind of have, to bend stuff and kind of put helper spheres in there for blend shapes, but that's a little bit, probably much. It's easy enough just to, uh, how to save out a modified material without overwriting the existing one and adding it to my collection. Um, so you're going to modify one, oh, without overwriting it. Um, what you're going to have to do is, I think you're going to go in here and you're going to say, you can copy a mat and you can paste a mat. You can load a mat, but it's going to overwrite one. If you wanted to, sh if you want just to add to your material collection down here, you can even put um, null materials in here if you want to. That would just be a matter of going to. Um, let me let me navigate there. If you go to, um, what am I looking for here? Z startup. So if you go to program files, pixel objects, you right. Z startup. Go to Z. Go to the materials. And you're going to see in here, we have some materials. You can add as many materials in here as you want. And then every time you start up ZBrush, you're going to have a bunch of materials in here. If you are going to be modifying just dummy null materials, you can throw in, just call one of the materials garbage, or you could even copy paste one of these, call it garbage.zmt. And then you can go in here and save it, you know, modify that material. And then, uh, you know, go in here to material save as, and if you save it in this folder, every time you start up ZBrush, it'll start up with that material. Um, if it's just a material you want every once in a while, you would just save it into ZBrush 408 Z materials. And you're gonna see, I have some comic style rendering from Pavlander's um, ZBrush guides. So if I go in here and hit the comma key, we can go into the material tab and you're going to see we have comic style rendering and then we have all these materials I can choose from. So now when I double click these, it is going to overwrite whatever material I have selected. So again, if you had a garbage material load on startup, um, you know, if we take this fibers one here and then I overwrite that with uh, this Batman one. And we hit D. So now we're getting that kind of comic look and then we go ahead and turn everything else back on so we can get like a Batman style Bowser here. But that would be one way to do it. I like this one for Bowser. Cool. Um, Makesh says, you have told about crit bashing. Hey, don't you do that? Yes, I do. Especially for quick design work. I'm thinking of scanning my hand and posing different poses in order to produce meshes for reference to using Fusion 360. But I need to scan my hand twice for a mesh with a cupped hand and a flat open palm. That's a good point. Yeah, if you want something very specific, like a fist and an open hand and a cupped hand and a pointed finger, um, you could... Now, if you need it to be like Fusion 360 so that it's super duper precise, then yeah, I would definitely do a different scan of those different poses because that's the only way you're going to know that this knuckle is going to pop out exactly this much and these knuckles are going to... I mean, you could sculpt all this. It's going to take you a while to take a hand from this to this. It might be easier just to scan this and then you know this is accurate as opposed to your artistic interpretation of accurate. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, three, Arton uh, says, Yo, Mike, did you follow the announcements during GDC? If you did anything you're especially excited about, Okay, so ray tracing, real-time ray tracing is exciting. Um, I don't know that it's super exciting for real-time video game solutions just yet, but I, what I do think it's exciting for is a rendering solution so that conceivably you could go into Unreal and just render your stuff, or if you were doing um, like television or movie production, that's just using the Unreal as a more of a real-time renderer. Because, um, I mean, we, we fake stuff enough right now 
that I don't think you're going to even notice the fidelity dip. Well, what you're going to notice is a frame drop or the fact that you need some very serious expensive hardware to get it to real-time ray trace um, for a video game on your PC or your console. Um, and, you know, they, this could always change. So, you know, everything I'm saying is just conjecture right now. So don't quote me on this. But um, where I do see the real-time ray tracing is more for a rendering option uh, in Unreal or as opposed to like, oh, now we get to have real, very accurate reflections. Eh, I guess that's cool for, but if you're running one at 60 frames a second, it's not worth that trade-off at the at this moment, I don't think. Uh, but where it is worth it is if you just needed to do, uh, set up a scene in Unreal and then be like, oh, I want to make this look really pretty, kind of like the iRay renderer in Substance. You can have it real-time rendering and then you can go, you know what, I don't mind waiting or going a little bit slower because I want a really nice render. You could just turn that on. Uh, Logarithmic Alchemist. Uh, I still don't know what that is. <laughs> I need to go and I, they had some really weird stuff to look at on their website. Um, oh, the new VR standard is cool. Um, the Niagara Particle stuff. That seems really powerful. I ha uh, it's a little over my head. I, ch I tried watching it while I was working on other stuff, and I, that's something I need to sit down and like really watch. Just sit there and take notes. Um, but it seems a super powerful way to kind of get back and forth. And it would be interesting with Houdini as well with those particles. Uh, see what kind of stuff we can get with that. Uh, I downloaded Houdini tutorial yesterday. Thanks as always. Oh yeah, if you guys missed that. Um, and this, the, usually on the Pixelogic channel, I try to stay very Pixelogic focused. But the reason I bring it up is because uh, it is very, it's, it's also ZBrush centric. So... For example, if we wanted to take this guy and put him into put him into Unreal Engine or Unity or make a game res version of him, an option for you you guys might like is this. I updated this uh, Houdini Game Dev Toolset video, and um, basically it's how to go from ZBrush through Houdini to kind of get your game res stuff, and it's it's fairly robust. You can go through here, and maybe we'll do it on my channel or this channel too. It just takes a few minutes. Um, to go through here and you can kind of decimate your stuff down, do a game res, you can paint where you want more polygons or less polygons, and then once you set up your node graph, you just go through your you just go through your node graph again. You know, once you have it saved, and then you can just every single asset you make, you can just change parameters on that node graph. And it's not scary. There's nothing scary about Houdini. It's actually pretty straightforward. So that might be an interesting um, one for you guys to watch. Let me go ahead also while I'm thinking about it, let me see stream. So you can go to my YouTube channel here, and the Pavlovich Workshop, where we are right now, here's the videos. And if you go to the Pixelogic channel on that Pavlovich Workshop, um, you can see everybody, everybody's got really good work on there. So definitely subscribe to Pixelogic and watch all those people do their stuff. You got any insider info on ZBrush 2018? All that is happening today. Everybody show up at noon uh, Pacific time, so 2 o'clock my time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be crazy, though, I bet. Cool. Um, so, Leon, Hugo Leon01 says, you can also use a clip tool brush, I guess, to make those polygroups. You know what? That's a good point. I'm being silly. So, let's go over here. Um, Hugo bring up a good, brings up a good point. So, when you're doing that and you want to make nice, clean, precise cuts, uh, for sure, yeah, use your slice curve. You can go through and just slice. Um, sometimes it's a little bit easier said than done. Like if I wanted to go through and slice that, but you might have to like, first you would have to do visibility just to kind of get stuff out of your way. It's like, okay, I want to slice through this tail part. And it's like, okay, get rid of that. And now that you only see these polygons, now it's a little bit easier to go through and slice a specific curve through there. But yeah, slice curve also. Um, you know, for this belly portion, we could have done like maybe a slight circle. Kind of slice through there. Good point. Um, how to extrude a mesh. That's just with Z modeler. And go through here and just extrude. Um, I'm, I usually have Q mesh on, but all you got to do is switch over to extrude here. Um, if you want more info, um, the Pixelogic Classroom has that. And also, I'm trying to make a concise playlist on that called ZBrush 4R8 
No, that wouldn't be ZBrush 408. That would be ZModeler. Um, hold on. That's an oldie. I have to go way back in time for that one. Um, here we go. Intro to ZBrush Part 3 on my YouTube channel. Um, all of this is mostly ZModeler stuff, so you can go through that one. Knock yourself out. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, look, question how many time to learn ZBrush? Um, how how many time to learn ZBrush? Oh, how much time does it take you to learn ZBrush? Kind of depends on how deep you want to go in and how proficient you need to be for your workflows. Uh, I, I try to want to learn everything. So Paul Gabriel and Joseph Dressed are really great guys to watch if you want, you want to know the breadth of ZBrush. Um, but even in that that scenario, there's some stuff that I've learned and and demoed, and then I've completely forgotten how to do so because I don't use it very often in my workflows. Um, let's see. <laughs> cool, cool. And again, I'm just going through these really quick. If I miss them, uh, just keep shouting them out. I'm, I apologize in advance. Um, those are doing Houdini model every day. You planted a demo dynamic side of things. I would love to. I'm still learning. I like. I don't know that much about Houdini. I just know my little area. Kind of the same thing with ZBrush. I know. I know a pretty broad width breadth of ZBrush, but there's still ancillary stuff that I don't know that much about. Um, do you work with UDIMs in your workflow? I don't really have a need for UDIMs at the moment. I'm not going to say that's not going to change, but uh, right now I just use UV sets. Alrighty, cool. Um, question, do you use Mari or only Substance Painter if you use both? What is better in principle difference between in a quick way? Uh, real quick, um, I, I only use Substance Painter. I've used Mari in the past. I don't really need that kind of fidelity and I like uh, because I usually just do game res stuff. So, and in fact, we'll, we maybe we'll take these into Substance Painter and have a little bit of fun because it's really, it is kind of fun. And if we can go through Houdini real quick. Um, oh, although if you want the manual workflow, I have that too. If you just want to use ZBrush for that, that's totally doable. Um, give me a second. I'm trying to think of the best one. I think this Sci-Fi Pistol series here goes through the process of just using ZBrush to kind of decimate these things down. And then uh, you could use UV Master if you wanted to. And then you could um, bake your maps in Painter later on if you want to. So I'll link you guys to that one. It's kind of the manual way as opposed to using Houdini. Um, but yeah, I use Substance Painter. There's nothing wrong with Mari. It's just I like um, a lot of the Substance Painter stuff is just for me and game engines. Uh, I don't need... I try not to even paint that much manual stuff if I can help it so now here's one thing I'm gonna do I do want to clean this up I don't need these polygroups anymore necessarily I just put those in for edge loop purposes but I do want to kind of clean up this finger here I could try to go through and also this thumb I could try and go through and like box model these areas but instead what I'm gonna try and do if I have let me see, quick mirror and weld, X symmetry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this thing and then underneath this body here, I'm going to do insert a Z-sphere. And then we're just gonna hide the Z-sphere in the body and then X scale down so that it's in the middle here. And just kind of out of the way. And then on this thing, we're going to go way down here to the bottom with that Z-Sphere selected topology, select topology, and we're going to select that um, topology that we made. And then we're going to go to edit topology. Also on our adaptive skin, I'm going to turn Dynamesh resolution down to zero, density down to one. And now when I hit, uh, also turn off transparency. When I hit A to preview that, you're going to see this is the topology we're getting. Um, we can clean that little stuff up. That's not a big deal. I'm um, also control shift drag will, if you have any, um, you can mask these points and sometimes you don't realize that you've masked points. Um, so you can control shift drag and then also control shift tab to make sure your, all your points are visible because you can't hide points. So anyway, uh, we have this. I, in order to see this a little bit better, I'm going to go down here to matcap pearl and then drop that down to a medium gray here. And we have still have X turned on. So let's go in here 
to these fingers and you're gonna see it kind of when it did the Z sphere topology it kind of went in a little too deep so I'm gonna hold down I'm gonna be in um, so I have draw move scale and rotate move scale and rotate is just moving these positions if I'm in draw mode I can hold down alt and I can um, as long as I'm in edit topology mode oh, give me a second so if this ever happens it is storing that file position so we can go ahead and launch the brush again and then I might just pop the hands out because I don't need it on the whole body so we're gonna simplify this we're just gonna do a zero mesh on the fingers to kind of clean those up and then we'll sew it back up now I didn't lose anything all we just gotta do is recover tool here and we'll go to actually you know what let's instead of grabbing the tool I'm gonna go all the way back to this project and we're gonna go we're gonna delete that z-sphere and then on this clone we have sitting out here what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say the only thing I really care about cleaning up I think is this piece these pieces right here so I'm gonna go ahead make sure I see both of them in fact I don't even need to see both of them now that I think about it let's get rid of that one so we're just gonna go ahead and delete hidden and you know what we can just hit control W so we just want to mess around with this hand here so we'll go back to our mesh here and then uh, we want to use this as our guide or as our mesh we want to snap to so I'm going to go to insert Z sphere and again hit X scale it down and then we're in good shape so let's go down here to topology uh, select topology we're going to select that hand and then go to edit topology turn off transparency mid gray is fine all right fingers crossed no pun intended we're gonna go through here and now we're gonna start modifying this thing I may have when I was demoing the fact that you can hide and show and mask points I may have done something stupid in there and done something weird with my points but we're just gonna go through here and we're gonna delete all these ones that went way in there and also this this intersection is a little bit troubling for me so I'm gonna get rid of it and you can also add points and then delete points as needed let's see let's see let's see let's see let's go ahead and delete that one and delete that one okay and then again um, we can move any one of these points individually um, yeah again this transition I'm not digging so I'm gonna bridge these two points here and you know what um, I had X turned on that's why it's giving me a issues here so we don't need X turned on so turn X off and now it should behave a little bit nicer so again we'll go through here and we'll push these through here and then this one I'm just going to continue let's get rid of this here and that there so now this one I want to come straight across hit W so again anything that's visible on your screen it will snap to and we're just going to come straight across here and then up and then over and then we can use move to kind of push these things around make your draw size really small and also if the other rest of this body is getting in the way you can also go back through here and say you know what all I want to see out of you is this piece right here that way you can stay a little bit more focused on what you're doing so um, I'm not gonna get real particular about these if I wanted to I should have uh, made a poly group to kind of cap these off to get a little bit more of a smooth transition around these fingers I don't know it's like I said before some days I get really particular about how my topology goes and today for some reason is one of those days um, most other days I'll just zero mesh it at a super high poly count and call it a day and when I'm real particular it makes for a really boring live stream so 
I apologize for that. Move this stuff around. Okay. So we were um, modifying this stuff. So let's go ahead and we're going to move this back a little bit. Give me a little bit of breathing room here. And we'll go ahead. I want to stay away from maybe putting triangles in any of these positions here. Let me see if I can work this around. So we're going to say put an edge ring right through here. And then we'll go through. And we can always clean this up as well and redirect this edge flow. I am just going to do kind of a quick and dirty version. I'm not overly concerned about because I don't plan on showing close-ups of this hand animating with the low res and engine by any means. So again, pick and choose your battles. You can spend a lot of time on this or you can spend just enough time to kind of uh, work your way through. And then we can clean this up with Zmodeler too. We can go through and collapse and delete edges. So again, there's more options. So we're just cleaning up this area here. Um, this is a five-sided here. Um, so we can go through here and we can just maybe move these things around here. It's not great. It's not great. Don't judge me too bad. But I think I think it'll be good enough. And then here we'll go ahead and attach this. We'll make an edge ring here around this finger and then through here the knuckle and then we need a little more resolution again. So when you're bending your knuckle you want to make sure you have enough resolution in here to make sure you can make a knuckle. So let's go ahead and put some geometry through here. And then we'll go ahead and, again, not a great triangle, but we can fix that in a second. So that's good enough. This is not great, but again, I think we can live with it. Now through here, let's make an edge ring like so. And we could run some more geometry down here if we need to, but I think we're okay. And again, apologize in advance for how st stimulating this must be watching me read apologize stuff. But you know what? That's one of those things you gotta do sometimes. All right, so we'll go ahead and run a line up here, and then here, and then here, and then here. And call this good enough. Ugh, it pains me, it pains me. But you know what, I'm gonna call it good enough. So um, I think we've rearranged some of this geometry in here to the point where at least I'm looking more for a good sculpt than I am for excellent deformations. I can live with that. So let's go ahead and let's again Let's do a quick save and then go over here to topology, uh, sorry, adaptive skin. So again, density of one, dynamic resolution down to zero. So when we hit, it's going to solo mode, we hit A, we're just going to get our low res geometry. It's not going to be like a weird dynamesh mesh that we want. And I'm just looking for holes basically or anything I didn't foresee. Uh, everything looks good. So let's hit uh, A again, or I guess we can hit A, make an adaptive skin. And then we can go through here, we can insert that skin z-sphere, and now the z-sphere we don't need. So if we go out of polyframe mode, and go into solo mode here, we have our hand, and we have our dynamesh mesh we have sitting here. So let's take our hand, our z-sphere we don't need anymore, so we can just go ahead and delete that. Uh, we'll bring our guy back, and so now we have this body, but we like this hand. So what we need to do is say on this body, um, luckily, it's just right along that poly group. If you didn't have that, all you would need to do is say, I want to grab that edge ring, and then um, I suppose you could do a auto groups and it'll go ahead and group all these things. But you can also go through here and just be like, okay, I want all these here. And then you. Okay, so then with those gone, we can do a delete hidden. And now we've got a good hand and a good body. Oops, good body good hand. Now this hand needs to be on both sides and it looks like that's oh, graphical glitch. Okay. Glitch. 
So uh, this hand I need on the other side is I'm going to do a quick mirror across the x-axis, deformation mirror, and then a ge geometry mirror and weld. And then we can merge these things down. Not these two. These two down. That's under the merge menu. And, uh, oh, when I merge those down, what I probably should have done is under the merge option turned on um, this weld points. But it's okay. Because these points are so close, you can just go into geometry, um, modify topology, and weld points. And that'll go ahead and weld all those points here. So uh, we also can do an uncrease, uncrease all under the geometry crease menu. And I think we're in good shape. So just to be sure, let's go back to our original body here and we'll go ahead, make sure X is turned on, um, do a project all. Everything's looking good, I think. I think we're in good shape, everybody. So we've got a new body. Um, this we probably don't need anymore, but what I am gonna do is to get those details back, you're gonna see right now, um, it's a very smooth mesh if we dynamically preview. Ooh, and you know what? Looks like we have a hole on that side, but not on that side. So we can go quick mirror, mirror and weld to fix that. So turn on dynamic preview to make sure your meshes are okay. So we've got that. And now um, if we do, if we did have a ton of detail on our other object, what we could do is we can go, um, we have both of our, both the eyeballs on. So we're gonna hit control D, which is gonna do geometry subdivide. And then we're gonna do a project all and then you can do control D, project all. And what you're basically doing is getting more subdivisions on your body and then projecting back to any details that you had. Once you've done that and you've got all the details back that you need, you can delete your original Dynamesh, don't need anymore. And now we have a beautiful body ready for posing and animation. And the other good thing too is this body now has subdivision history. So if we were to do a transpose master, we would have a nice low res version to move and rotate around. And then we can have a high res version with all our details on it. So let's go into solo mode here. Up to subdivision level three. And let's hold down shift, smooth. And we can just start refining this shape here. I'm not gonna do a ton of refining. Let's go smooth stronger here. Like this down. And also let's go to that cap gray and white color and make sure I'm on OBS correctly. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, morning. Hired. Thanks for showing up. Um, you, d -d -d -d. um, let's see, Mike, any recommendation for books for sculpting, not ZBrush, just sculpting because I can work my way out in ZBrush, but I don't feel confident enough in the sculpting area. Oh, books. That's a good one. Um, I do like, uh, oh, at um, Nomon, where uh, ZBrush is there, John Brown has some good sculpting DVDs. It's, I, I like to watch people sculpt rather than read books on that. So um, John Brown's a good one. I like watching Jordi Shell sculpt. He's uh, He's got some sculpting stuff out there. Um, Ray Villafane has some pumpkin sculpting stuff I've watched. He's another really good one. Andy Bergholtz is another one. So those are really just really good traditional sculptors. Um, as far as digital sculptors, um, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's amazing digital sculptors with videos out there. I just haven't watched any of them. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any um, recommendations. Uh, anatomy for sculptors really has spanked down to like, form the human body. Oh yeah, for anatomy specific stuff, there's a ton of books. You know what? I'll do put that in my frequently asked questions, uh, and I'll I'll give you a better answer. Facts is called anatomy resources. I'll compile a list for you. Uh, there we go. Um, do, 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 do. Pat Mike, when that happens to me, my recovery tool is never anywhere near that where I left off when ZBrush crashes. For me, usually um, the Z tool, the recovered Z tool, is uh, just where I or just where I left off. And in this case, the Z project was also fine. Um, Claybrush acting weird. Sorry, uh, I'm going here and clean this up. You can also just run like a general smooth with your deformations. So. Um, polish by feature, I'm not going to use because that would treat my poly groups as features, but we could just run a polish or under deformation, you just do a little smooth here. Um, 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 smooth. It's kind of vaguely smooth the entire body out. And now you can go through here and use your Damien standard brush 
Okay, I'll go ahead and... And if you do notice any weird pinching or creasing when you're smoothing, you can use that different algorithm where you hold down, you hold down shift, start smoothing, and then let go of shift. It'll spread your, um, instead of averaging, you're just doing a simple average of your vertices. It'll spread your poly, your vertices over the, uh, what am I trying to say? Over the forms of your mesh. For some reason, I'm having a real hard time like thinking my brain working, and then me doing. Um, some days are better than others. And again, with our standard brush here, I'm going to crank that lazy radius up, and we're just going to kind of emphasize. This isn't really in the reference, but I am going to emphasize like just the folds and the skin, just to put some visual interest in these transitional areas here. I just like to see them. Makes him look more alive. Also in the knees here, he has zero definition in the reference that I'm looking at anyways. They're just like tubes. But I always like to put like just a little, little bit of landmarks in here and make it look just like a little bit more constructed um, and just more appealing to me personally. Um, but if you are doing super stylized rendering or super stylized modeling, then you would maybe make the decision also maybe the inflate brush here too. make the decision to just keep them as cylindrical as possible you know because you're going for that super primitive and by primitive I don't mean like caveman I mean like primitive shapes cylinders cubes maintaining primitives is more important in your style than constructing forms or giving like a semblance of anatomy but I always like to see things a little bit more constructed, so that's where I go through here and probably put an excess amount of garbage. Okay, so we can clay brush these things out. This is where his little nails go in. If we wanted to as well, you know, if his toes are going to bend, we need to make sure that we message that his toes do bend sometimes. And how do you make something look like it bends sometimes? As you put a little wrinkle in there. So if you've ever seen on Reddit or I don't know, those things where it's like, hey, my finger doesn't bend, and then you, it hasn't bended since birth, so you just have a straight finger, so you don't have any wrinkles in your knuckles. Same thing here. If you never bend something, you're probably not going to have any wrinkles there. But if you bend something a lot, or if you close something a lot, like your eyeballs, you'll get wrinkles. And then again, um, you know, when we start bending these fingers, we're going to have plenty of resolution for sculpting blend shapes. Um, but if you were doing this on just a game res, you would probably want to go through here and add edge loops around these knuckles here. And in Z modeler, it'd be simple to just insert single edge loop and just, um, oh, this has sub multiple subdivision levels. But you could freeze transformations or before you subdivide, make sure you go through here and add subdivisions. Just so on your lowest res, one, you can bend the fingers, but I'm not overly concerned about that now because, again, this is just going to be a poseable sculpt here. So go through here, and here, here. And he's very simple in here. He's got just like a little, little fat baby hand. So I think we'll just leave this alone for now. We don't need to put any detail in there. I think we're looking okay. Let's go into solo mode. Really just focus on this little chubby body we got going. There we go, and we'll go up through here, around the neck maybe. We can maybe separate out his neck from his shell. That'll be useful too when we're posing him, just to give a little bit of a differentiation between here. I'm also going to hold down shift and let go of shift, just to really smooth this out. We'll go back in and define that if needed. And then his little fat neck here probably has some rolls on the back. And then go back in with our standard brush or your inflate brush. Emphasize this a little bit, maybe. Okay. Um, if you watch the, uh, I think I was on AMD's. No, I was on my. Uh, no, I must have. I don't know. I was on AMD's channel or my channel or something. And I was doing a little demo where I was uh, demoing this guy out, and we gave him like a little muscle body. It was pretty fun. But on this case, I don't think I'm going to do that. But what I am going to do, again, is we'll just kind of emphasize maybe his little love handles. 
Let's go in here with our inflate brush. We'll kind of pudge this out a little bit here on the sides. Once again, he's a chubby little dude. So we'll go ahead and smooth this out. And then we could even emphasize here. Like I'm not going to build in lats or anything, but we can certainly just give the impression that he's got some mass that's kind of sitting over his leg there. You can always mask and inflate as well, or mask and then sculpt around these is fine. And then for his back here, I'm not going to put a whole lot of detail, obviously, because he's got a shell over it. Um, but if you wanted to go nuts back there and do like an anatomical study of what a chubby Bowser Jr. body would be, feel free. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I miss any questions, I apologize. I'm just going through these really quickly. Um, Hugo says, Mike, I usually use topology brush for some areas like the face, but when I use the whole ZBrush turns down the performances. How did you, how can I maintain the level of sculpt performance when using this brush? Um, that one, yeah, if you have a super high resolution mesh, and I guess this starts to fit that, if I keep subdividing this one and you go in with your move brush here and you got auto masking and you turn on topological, um, it's having to evaluate the topology before it moves. So, um, maybe you can like do visibility and it has to evaluate less of your topology. I'm not positive that that's the case, but that might be uh, something that is that could help you out in the performance area. Um, sorry, I like making this guy chubby. Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> um, but I'm not per I'm not positive on that one. Uh, how important is ZBrush to learn from environment art? Kind of depends on the environment you're using. I'm not an environment expert by any means, so but I mean if you wanted to do scan data and photogrammetry and stuff, ZBrush is definitely worthwhile, worth knowing. Um, also, any prop, you know, environments is also props in some studios. Um, so if you want to, you can go to this um, <clears throat> photogrammetry playlist, and in this playlist, you know, we use PhotoScan and reality, reality Capture, but I also use ZBrush for our cleanup. So you can check this one out. Oops. Yeah, I guess it'll paste. There you go. You can look at that one. And that's just photogrammetry cleanup. Uh, and Dre says, Mike, you're streaming at two places at once on YouTube. Weird. I'm going through Restream. Uh, Pixelogic Restream. I don't know how to fix that. Michael Powers, ZBrush Live. Huh, that should be the one I'm on. Um, oh, good. So I've, there's there's some good ones in here. Uh, Zach Petrock, Scott Eaton, uh, Alex Olivier, Raf Grissetti, Glauco Longi, Frank Zhang. There you go. Yeah, go look at those guys for digital. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. Uh, initialize. If I initialize ZBrush, will I lose UI and imported material collections and brushes? Um, yes. Uh, imported. You won't lose your UI. If you change your UI, all you got to do is go over to Preferences, Config, and then Store Config, and that'll save your UI. Um, any imported materials you might lose, but again, if you throw all that stuff into your... Let me close some of these windows down here. into your Pixelogic ZBrush 48Z startup. If you throw anything in here, every time you start up ZBrush, you'll get those back. So that's a way to kind of maintain your working work uh, workspace. Cool. And uh, is retopology and primitive sculpting important for laser 3D printing or just for rendering games, etc.? Um, yeah, if you're just doing 3D printing, you can keep everything just a DynaMesh. Now, I even then, I would tend to use ZRemesher and retopologizing and primitive shapes just to get nice, clean results. Um, it's very, and if you go on the, 
not Pavlovich workshop, but just the Pixel Logics channel here. You go to videos, you're going to see, um, yeah, I guess I am. Restream, untitled broadcast. I don't know how to fix that. Um, <laughs> oops. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, go through here and you're going to see a lot of stylized sculptors in here. Oops, looks like I need to watch some SC brushes. So a lot of stylized sculpts in here. Um, and then th those will just give you nice clean shapes. And you can use DynaMesh to get your mesh and then you can zero mesh that result. But um, sometimes it is useful. In fact, if we wanted to, we could DynaMesh the head to his face, to his body, and then zero mesh all that together. Or zero mesh them separately and then stitch them together if we needed to. Uh, I kept them separate just for workability purposes. And I can pose these things out. It also looks like in my reference that you never ever see his head connecting to his body. So it, those nice natural seams you can build in there are perfectly fine and also the seam along his head is usually pretty harsh so that's why so far I'm choosing to um, make these separate meshes but we'll see if I want to change that <laughs> sorry about that uh, the Wacom I'm using oh yeah if you want my hardware stuff and I'll throw this in my frequently asked questions too I'm still generating it it's a big list I need to make, but my hardware, I'll link you to this video. If you go to the description down here, show more. Uh, here's everything you need to know about my setup, and also Intuos Pro Medium Tablet is what I use. Nothing fancy at all. Cool. Um, J Murph says, um, watching a video yesterday again, so a lot of questions may have. It's called Life as a 3D Modeler in the Film Industry, VFX on YouTube. Check that out. Yeah, because I don't work in film. So a lot of the Mari side of things, I mean, you could use Mari for games. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, UDIMS and Mari, more of a film thing at the moment. Ah, oh, so, okay. Okay, let me see if I can. Ugh, go to the comments here. Give me a second. Streaming. Or, let me see if I can add. Disconnect, disconnect. Yeah, I'm only connected to one YouTube here. Sorry, technical difficulties here. Okay, okay, okay. Now let me go through this chat. Ah, um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, really, really quickly. <clears throat> yeah, uh, concept drawn first before you start modeling and you enjoy sculpting out of your head. Um, I prefer, it was from uh, Plavonia. Um, I do both. I try, I'm trying to get better 2D work. Um, you know, and, and, and 3D is also a great tool for 2D artists, too. I, I actually want to do a series on 3D tools for 2D artists. I think a lot of 2D artists are missing out by not using 3D for their 2D work. Um, but usually what I, when I'm just doing stuff, it's just going in there with 3D. You know what? I don't like this transition here. I think this fold goes a little deep to that knee. There we go. And also on his hands here, we can start, I don't want to give him like witch hands or anything, but again, it's just, we can build up some forms in here. Make it look like it's got some functionality. And it's kind of an awkward finger too. Hmm. You can build up along the top here. So the tops of fingers are usually a little flatter. Now, of course, on a super stylized character, they're just going to be noodle tubes. Um, but again, we can have it, give it a little semblance of structure. And then also on the bottoms here is usually when they're a little, a little more rounded. If you really get into the anatomy part of things, you'll look at, you know, what part 
you know, it, it bulges more towards the crease, and then, uh, you know, it's flatter on the top than it is on the bottom, and then which ones are bendier and which ones are flatter, and which fingers have different flatness, all sorts of stuff you can get into there. But for this guy here, we're just going to go with the bottoms of the fingers are rounder and the tops are flatter. And then the creases are going to be where I have them for bending this guy around. They may not be super accurate, but I think we'll live. Also, when you're sculpting, even if you've got subdivisions, you can just go ahead and isolate here, make your life a little bit easier when you're navigating. <clears throat> there we go. Let's go in here with our standard brush. We'll build up around this a little bit more. On the wrist, we'll emphasize this maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, um, I was going through this one. Where's the first part for this character? Um, we, uh, that was on A&D stream. Go to my YouTube channel or go to this workshop playlist here, reference. The, oh, you know what? I probably, probably need to reply to you guys in this chat, don't I? Uh, it's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna send you all in this chat <laughs> to Oh, give me a second. Playlist, playlist. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Hold on. Give me a second. Um, oh, you know what? Um, I don't know if I can actually reply to this chat. Um, um, um. Say something. Okay. Can I link? Or is it going to yell at me? Yeah, it's not going to let me link. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, there's something weird going on. Anyway, I can answer your questions, but go to my YouTube channel. Go to Pixel Logic channel. Cool, cool, cool. Um, scale, mono slide. Do, do, do. What do you think about the Houdini 16 Booleans? Pretty good. Do you prefer studio work or contract? Or are you flat out streaming and sourcing your own network? Uh, no, I do studio work. I work nine to five at certain affinity. And then I do kind of teaching and stuff on the side. Can you show us how do you use ring edge loop when you make retopology around cylindrical shapes? Um, that should just be an insert edge loop. Uh, yeah, use, use, um, Uh, uh, use Size Master for the 3D print sizing stuff. Um, can you give me five reasons why a concept artist I should learn Houdini? Uh, if, if you don't want to get into production work, I'd use Houdini because Houdini will do the production work for you. As a, you know, if you want to retopologize and do a bunch of, I mean, and there's five different ways you can do production work <laughs> or a hundred. Um, it's just a speed of workflow and learning new tools. And also, if you really want to dig deep into Houdini, you could conceivably um, all concept is, is a set of parameters that, that decisions that you're making. So you could concept out entire characters or ships all within Houdini if you wanted to. I mean, you could do the same thing in ZBrush. Um, but procedural workflows, they can get pretty scary. And by scary, I mean awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. How do I make a fiber mesh brush? That I would just duplicate off a pre-existing fiber mesh, like a grooming brush, I assume you mean. Any one of these. I would start with one that you want to use, change the settings on it, and then save it out as uh, another brush that you want to use. Okay, so I think I'm caught up there. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Are you planning on doing some videos on low poly for games? I do have some. Uh, my YouTube channel, the zebra, the 
reptile creature series is more of a game res one. Um, eventually. Did you study art and design and where? I went to Texas State Technical College in Waco, got my associate's degree, and then I went to Ringling College in Sarasota, Florida, and got my bachelor's in computer animation. I graduated in 2005. I, they have game stuff there now, game-specific stuff, but I went to computer animation, which is a little more film-ish oriented. Let's go ahead and take this and shove that way up in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring everything back, and let's go ahead and make sure these nails are fitting in there. I'm going to hit D for a dynamic preview, and for the toes as well. And this is bugging me seeing myself. Um, Paul says, I would like to see the character unwrapped and then bake the texture in Painter. would like to see the process. Um, go to my uh, YouTube channel, and the very latest one, you can see, um, or go to the uh, what were we talking about earlier? ZBrush Pistol series or whatever that's called. Check that one out. Or go to my live stream highlights and you'll see us doing a lot of ZBrush to Painter workflows. And again, when I finish my Frequently Asked Questions page, I'll just link you to my, I'll just gonna make it an art station blog. And then I'm going to organize it enough so that it'll be easy to navigate all these questions I ask. I usually end up answering the same question, give or take. So I make it a little bit easier for you guys to get resources as opposed to me trying to link you guys. And sometimes I won't be able to link you guys because I've got some sort of weirdo chat thing going on today. So let's go ahead and let's smooth this out just a bit. Let's also turn off um, <clears throat> dynamic preview so we can see what's really going on in here. And looks like we got some nasty geometry going on in here. Let's go ahead and maybe move this back here. Yeah, let's smooth this out. Let's see if we can't. Um, I don't want to make any mangled geometry at this subdivision level, if I can help it. I don't mind overlapping in later subdivisions. But in these early subdivisions, I like to keep these as clean as possible. So one thing I can do is I can isolate just this polygroup here, and we're going to do a quick polish by features open circle, and that'll just relax those. And it looks like when I made this polygroup, I was a little overzealous. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm just going to scale this one in. Let's isolate this polygroup here. Yeah, really bizarre stuff going inside that mouth. So I must have made some sort of mistake here. So let's fix this real quick if we can. I'm going to isolate this one. I'm going to do Control Shift S to shrink. And I'm going to go ahead and split this off. And on this one, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to isolate that one and I'm just going to delete that. So now I've got these two separate pieces here that I want to sew up. There might be an easy way to do this. Let's see. So I'm going to isolate just these two pieces here. Uh, temporarily I'm going to flip these normals and I'm going to flip these ones as well. And I'm going to turn on, uh, I guess we can turn on double for this one. So I basically want to sew these two up. Let's see if we can't. Figure this out. And I suppose we couldn't do a. Sorry, this is getting into really, really boring stuff here. So be careful when you're zero meshing stuff, so you don't run into problems like this. I'm not sure what I did here. And again, it was weeks ago that I did this stuff. So I couldn't even tell you. It's not like we did this recently. Let's try and double for this one.
Oof. Yeah, he's got some serious issues. Okay. Let's take this one here. And we'll do a delete hidden. And we'll flip. Yeah, some really weird geometry in there. I must have extruded or something. So anyway, we don't need to recreate that mouth bag. That's just something we can just make real quick. So um, sorry, mouth bag. You, I guess, get to be deleted. <sighs> it's too bad, though, because these are really close to just being able to be sewn up. And I do like that geometry in there. And I'm trying to avoid zero meshing this head again, if I can help it. I was hoping so we could do something like if I merge, let's <clears throat> shoot this one to the top, shoot this one to the top, merge them down. Let's do brush, curve BC, curve bridge. And if we run a curve to this one and then run a curve to this one, it'll sew it up for me. Did that do an okay job? I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but can I live with it? You know what? I think we can. Let's go ahead and flip here again. Yeah, you know what? I think that'll work. Although, um, before I did that, I had double turned on. So turn off double. I'll turn it on temporarily. I do need to flip these first. So now this may not work that well. Let's see. Um, brush curve bridge this side to this side, or it may work better. Yeah, that'll work. And we'll just go through here and smooth this out. Okay. Whew. So instead of manually going through there and bridging all these points here, again, it's not perfect, but we'll just do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. X symmetry turned on. Okay, so again, sorry, I don't know what was it that was all about, but you know, these things happen sometimes. And then we'll hit D for a dynamic preview. Shift D, looks like we got a hole in its face. So to clear that up, I'm just gonna do a quick weld points. Looks like when I did the weird mirror and weld it did something weird, so I'm going to go ahead and delete a single poly here. Get rid of that. Let's do a flip. Ugh, all down the middle there, of course. Give me a second. And this is one of those measure twice, cut once. I was apparently overzealous when I made this mouth bag originally, and now I'm paying for it. So let's say flip it again and do a weld points. So let's crank that weld distance up just a bit. And then we will. bridge edges here to here oh don't tell me these are flipped too let's see are these doubled up oh you know what they probably are oh, okay let's try this one more time so what we're going to do is we're going to do a delete hidden and then I'm going to turn off X symmetry. I'm going to brush curve bridge. We're going to bridge this again with X symmetry off. And then I'm going to do a quick mirror and weld. And then I'm going to do a <laughs> weld points. And then I'm going to hit D for dynamic subdivisions. Okay. We're clean. Sorry, everybody. Um, 
Okay, okay, going back up here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Cool, cool, cool. And again, if I miss anything, I apologize. I'm juggling things here. Can zebras create very hard, complex, hard surface stuff? Yes. Go to my YouTube channel. There's a million examples of that. And um, also on everybody else's channel, too. There's a lot of... Uh, Chi Fang's another really good one. Uh, Tony Leonard. Cool, cool. Um, did you know you can actually accidentally break a finger and have it go inside your hand, like an inside-out glove? Ouch. Um, what angle of view do you use in sculpting posing? Default is 90. I don't ever have perspective turned on. Um, hardly ever. If I need to match something, I'll turn it on, and then I'll usually drop it down to around under the draw menu. You're going to have your angle of view. You can drop that down to like 17 is like 35 millimeter camera, I think. Um, but I just don't have I don't have perspective turned on hardly ever. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So angle of view, close to cinematic cameras, 35 millimeter. Um, uh, that's something I just eyeball. I remember when I was, I don't remember what, how many millimeters, but I think it was when I was doing likenesses or matching photogrammetry, scan data, I should say, uh, from photographs for painting, it was, angle of view was around 17. Uh, there's a plugin for a ZBrush called Camera Bag. Awesome, use that. Cool, cool, cool. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, every now and then, Pavwork channel is not easy to find next or previous. You know what? That might be my fault. So if I go to... Hold on. So for some reason, you know what? I just need to clear that out. I need to start over on that. Wait for it. Um, da -da -da -da. Live stream full episodes. I do sort them, 33. I sort them, I have to sort them manually, 37, 38, 39, 40. Sometimes I do mess up, but they all seem to be in order now. So give that another shot. <laughs> Uh, do you have any way of finding out the uh, FOV from the reference screen caps you get, or are you just estimating? I just estimate, unless you have... Yeah. Um, and also, if you're doing a bunch of photographs from, the, from Google, depending on what lenses they use, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, cool. Yeah, and um, if you go to my live streams, we did live stream, um, for example, this one, this was all, this is what we'd started in ZBrush, and then again, this is just kind of concepting out in ZBrush, this weirdo little Book of the Dead type thing we had going, and then we just took this through Houdini and then threw it in the painter, and then just textured it up and all that good stuff, so well, maybe we'll, we'll do that in this channel too, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get there, so... How much time we got left? Okay, we got about 30 minutes left. Uh, where would we leave off with this guy? He's got his nails in. He's got a shell done-ish. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this shell not super precise. I'm not going to go through here and like rebuild this and make this super beautiful, but I guess we can clean this up a little bit. Um, do I want to separate this ridge out from the shell? And I think I think I want to. So, let's isolate this, and I'm going to... This is... Um, not Dynamesh, this is just Z remeshed. That's okay. I'm going to Dynamesh this real quick. Hit XOLG RSX symmetry. And now we can go ahead and let's go ahead and mask this area off. And this shell part, we're going to keep a separate from our green shell part. Again, kind of for material purposes, if we wanted to throw this in a key shot or bake off a material ID, sometimes it's easier to have this thing separated out than not. So I'll go ahead and mask this out here. Control Alt Tap, and then we'll unmask these areas here. There we go. So now, 
we got the shell. Let's hit Control W. We'll isolate this poly uh, piece here. Um, you know what? Let's grab both of these. Let's isolate this, invert that. Let's do a quick auto groups, and then we'll do a quick mirror and weld. Bring everything back. Mirror and weld. We'll isolate both of these polygroups here. Control W, make them all one polygroup. And now we can split. We can split this off, split hidden, and now we can Z remesh this. I think that'll be good. Um, I suppose we don't need this inner ring either. But is it really going to hurt us? I think we'll be okay. Let's leave it capped. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do a half that size down to zero Z remesh. And we can polish these open borders too here, but I think if I Z remesh it down enough, it'll be fine. Half. Come on. I guess I should have started lower. Yeah. Okay. So we've got these crinkly lines here. I'm going to go down here to masking and we're going to do mask the open border. Mask the open border. Grow mask, invert that mask, and then just do a polish by features open circle, and we'll just smooth that out. And now in Wizzy Remesh, it should give us a little bit of an easier job and go a little bit faster, because it's not having to do as much thinking on those hard edges here. All right, rate apologized, good. And we'll go ahead and say, let's go ahead and close this hole here. We'll make this a polygroup. And then on this thing, um, if we did want to do a little bit of box modeling, we can let's do transpose modeling instead of Z modeler. So we're gonna hit W. We're gonna go into uh, turn off, hit Y, and then Control Tap this one. So now we are uh, we can hit E, and then Control, bring in an edge ring, and then hold down Control and go into W, and you can just kind of push this in. There we go. That'll work. And then this down here, we're going to have to... So let's go ahead and we'll just dynamesh this again. Gotta go ahead and close our holes. Give us a new polygroup for this one so we can isolate that one. And we can go through here and we can inflate this. And then dynamesh it again. We'll clean that up. And I'm trying to think of a non-boring way to clean this up and I think we might just leave it dynamesh here and then Z remesh it. I suppose we could make poly groups and have the Z remesher keep these things intact and we could do panel loops to give us the bumped out parts. Um you know what that probably wouldn't be terrible to do. I mean nothing's really takes that long, but then whenever you start doing like five minute processes on live streams, it can get kind of boring real quick. You'd be surprised. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. We all caught up. Um, yes, I'll, I'll be doing more Houdini stuff on my channel. I approach making realistic facial features such as wrinkles. Um, get a good wrinkle brush or alpha stamps. Um... Probably, probably your best bet. Um, I'm trying to think if we did more realistic modeling on another episode of this. Probably not wrinkles. You know, looking at this now, I could have just had a sphere that I uh, modeled this on. So let's see if we can break this down into something usable really quickly. So if I go through here and I polygroup these tops and then we panel loops or groups loops, I suppose that would be okay. Um, we can also just manually retopologize this. That might actually give us, that might actually be the best. Okay, you know what, I, it, this is simple enough where I can, I can, I can do this quickly. So insert Z-sphere. 
hide just the z-sphere and what I want to model. And the z-sphere, we're going to go into x-symmetry. We're going to scale it down. W, move this into place. And then density, edit topology Q, turn off transparency, that cap, pearl, medium gray. And now really quickly, we're just going to go through here and we're going to do a border. And then in through here. And again, panning, panel loops could have done um, a little bit more of the heavy lifting for us than what I'm showing now, but we can also just go in here and clean this up. And again, you can just leave this DynaMesh if you want. It's not a big deal. Three, two, one. And we'll bump this up and then back down. And then we'll go this way. Over, over, down. Here to here, here to here, here to here. And then we'll go down this way. Like I said before, you can Z remesh this. Um, looking back, I probably, if I was problem solving from the beginning, like I should have been, um, I would have tackled these shells a little bit differently and again had um, panel loops doing the heavy lifting for me. So basically, you would just polygroup out these shapes on a, on a uh, sphere or a half sphere. And then when you did panel loops, it would give you this thickness and you could turn double off and it would make it all in shape. Um, I suppose I could just do that real quick. Um, would that be worth it? Yeah, it might be worth it. All right, you know what? Change my mind. Delete that. Let's do it a slightly easier way. So we've got this here. I'm going to append a Sphere 3D. Uh, we should probably have done an insert. I'm just going to look at the Sphere 3D and this together. And the Sphere 3D, we're going to go back into Gizmo. We're going to scale this down. And we're going to put this into place here. I'm going to use this as a reference for making my panel loops here. Turn on X symmetry. And if I remember correctly, there was a way to paint through and have it blocked, but I don't know if I remember how to do that exactly. But right now we're just going to get the basic shape of the shell and then we're going to recreate the shell in a way that's a little bit easier for us. Okay, good enough. So I'm going to turn on transparency. We're going to go back into matte cap white color. And then on here, I'm going to go into standard mode, turn on RGB, and we can start painting here. So let's go ahead and do, let's choose a red color here, and turn on ghost. And also, if we want to follow this, let's uh, before we start doing that, let's hold down Control Shift, go into Slice Curve, and I'm going to slice right where the shell border is. 
Now we don't even need this back part here. And also what you could do, instead of painting this, is you could just go through and slice. Maybe let's try that. Now this isn't going to slice across an axis, and it could get kind of ugly, but we'll give it a shot. So, and we can just mirror and weld this. So I'm going to take this here, and then this here. So it's going to be a little ugly to start, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up these areas here, and then these ones can all be one, and then this one can be one. All right, so now that I got those cleaned up, let's do a quick mirror. Oops, let's do a mirror and weld. Um, um, um. All right, now I can just hide visibility on these ones I like. Oops, let's go ahead and fix this one. Okay, so we've got this one here, this one here, and this one here I all like. Those are great, everything else is garbage. Hit Control W, and now we'll just continue slicing. So, let's go ahead and slice here. And slice here. So now I like this one. This one, this one, and this one. This one and this one. This one. And then this one uh, is just going to get mirrored. So. so we'll go out of transparency mode, go into solo mode here, and you're going to see we have all of those shapes cut in the way we like. And now we can do possibly, let's try zero mesher, same, depth to size down, X symmetry turned on. Let's see what that result gets us. Whoa, we need to keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. There we go. So now we have all these shapes here. And we didn't need to do that zero mesher step. You can just, um, <clears throat> you can just do that. Uh, with the, whatever geometry you have, but I like to have stuff a little bit cleaner. So what we're going to do is we're going to bridge two points, and we're going to clean this up, and this up, and again, just like we did before, you can go through here, hold down Alt to start painting, tap Shift to inherit that poly group, same thing for up here. Clean those up. Those corners don't match up as well as I'd like, and it does get a little bit iffy over here. And let's go ahead and say, let's delete this one little overlap piece of geometry there. And then we'll bridge, delete a point, bridge edges, and then Alt, Paint, and Shift. All right, good enough. So now that we got that shape, what we can try and do now is go over here to our edge loops, and we can go in here to panel loops. And let's see, panel loops, a uh, five is fine. Thickness, we'll crank that up. Polish, we're going to turn down, and then we'll hit panel loops. And now we're going to start getting, uh, let's see, 
There we go. Now we're going to start getting those shapes here. Um, although, I really need these things to match up better. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can't collapse this edge down. All right, and keeping an eyeball over here as well. Let's go ahead and I'm going to smooth this out. It's having a hard time with these shapes. I'm going to zero mesh this again, but I'm going to keep it the same resolution. Any other tricky ones? Let's go ahead and do a split edge here, and then again, Alt Paint, Shift. Okay, let's see. Zero mesh, same. Yeah, that'll work a little bit better. Actually, before I did that, let's move this down a little bit more. And just for fun, let's do a zero mesh half. Yeah, that worked fine. Let's do a zero mesh half one more time. Hmm, getting a little bit questionable over there. Okay, so I think this will work. So now, when we do our panel loops, we can go over here and we can say panel loops. And now we're getting these divisions here. Let's polish one. Or three. Cool. And yeah, you know what? We can't have polish on because as these come to corners, it is going to keep those sharp. So that's not a huge deal. Um, let's turn on our original sculpt here. Yeah, that's okay. And now we can even go through here. And we can hit D for a dynamic preview and see that's the result we're getting. So actually could be an easier way to kind of make this stuff instead of retopologizing it. Um, 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 okay, I think we're wrapping up here. Let's see if we've got any more questions before I head out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I could have re completed the retopo at this point had a cleaner low-poly version. Maybe. Maybe. Um, cool, cool. Are we all caught up? Let me see. Oh, you know what? I've been neglecting Facebook. Um, but I don't know where the comments are for that one either. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm bad at this restream. Although we are having some, we are restreaming to two places here on YouTube for some reason. Sorry about that. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and head out. You guys have a good week. Um, I should see you guys next week, Tuesday mornings, this channel, Thursday mornings, my channel. I am going to be out next Thursday morning though, but you know, go through my YouTube channel and you can get caught up there. Thanks. Whoops, I'm typing in the wrong thing here. So with the places I'm allowed to type, thank you. And you guys too. Oh, I guess you are getting that one. Maybe I'm on the wrong chat. No, that's the right chat. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I will see you next week, I think. And have...